On this episode of the Turnbuckle, we talk about WWE's Q4 Financials media call notes, AW's considering starting a streaming service, and Eric Bischoff believes Tony Khan wants to be in a particular conversation. Folks, we're in your favorite wrestling movie some wrestling news because it's time for the Turnbuckle! WWE's financial dominance remains unmatched in the industry with the company announcing record-breaking yearly revenue and another strong quarter to end the year. Ahead of their quarterly investors call Thursday afternoon, the company released their reports and touted a company best $1.3 billion in net revenue, an increase of 18% year over year. Their operating income also increased to a record $283.8 million, up 11% year over year. The record numbers were fueled by their various rights deals with NBC Universal and Fox for both Raw, SmackDown, and domestic WWE Network rights. Additionally, they enjoyed a full year of ticketed shows and the return to Saudi Arabia this past fall. The other category of media revenue, which contains the revenue from the Saudi show and additional programming, was up to $148.5 million from $73.5 million year over year. Nick Khan, Paul Levesque, and Frank Riddick conducted the call. Khan acknowledged Vince McMahon's return to the company, as did Levesque later on, saying having McMahon around has been great, and having him back even just at the board level is, quote, a tremendous asset to the company. Khan acknowledged the exploration of a sale without saying the word sale and that they were reviewing all options for shareholder value. What they are looking for with a partner and how the sale could affect media rights came up consistently during the Q&A portion. Khan said that McMahon's inclusion in running WWE wouldn't be a factor with a sale and that he would step down and not be involved if it meant more for shareholder value. Any sale would honor the existing NBCU and Fox deals. The first renewal rights window begins after WrestleMania. When talking about NBC Universal, Khan said he really liked the cadence of their WWE promotion and the ability to move Raw to different networks when the preemption is needed, citing the Winter Olympics example. Khan said they are exploring selling rights to ring assets like ring aprons, turnbuckles, mats, etc. Khan said Mountain Dew slash Pepsi came to them winning a sponsored match. His team then went to Triple H and that's what could be done. Khan says more companies are interested in WWE media rights than last time around. And in advance of their delayed plans in India appears to be on tap for April if regulatory issues are resolved there. Khan said the pandemic really delayed some plans. So there's a lot to go over. I'm not going to sit here and go over all the boring stuff about like the numbers in the year over year. Okay, if you want to know more about that, you can uh, find the media call. You can go on F4W online and uh, yeah, you can just look at the notes there and they'll tell you. So one thing that I wanted to talk about was, okay, Khan said that McMahon's inclusion in running WWE wouldn't be a factor with a sale and that he would step down and not be involved if, if it meant more for shareholder value, which essentially tells me that Vince McMahon is trying everything in his power not to leave the WWE, right? He is trying so hard to sort of think of any and all loopholes to stay in, if it meant more for shareholder value. So that pretty much tells you, right, that if a company came in and they said, hey, I want to buy WWE, and Nikon said, okay, yeah, sure, I don't see anything wrong with that, and then like the, oh, what was it, J.P. Morgan? J.P. Morgan was like, yeah, 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 sure. And then, so I assume if it meant more for shareholder value. So if this came in, right, and was like, you know what? I'm perfectly fine with this sale, but I actually don't think that this is good for shareholder value. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stay here and just watch over the company and make sure that shareholder value is maintained. I don't know. That's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like Vince McMahon is basically trying to find a way to stay within the company so that he doesn't have to leave. Now, I don't necessarily know how well that is going to hold up when the time actually does come, but so far, it sounds like Vince is just trying to find any last-ditch attempt to stay with the company. At the end of the day, it's not really, nothing really like crazy daisy happened. It's a media call. It's boring. They're going to talk about number yappy yap, all right? But a lot of the time, they will talk about like uh, uh, upcoming stuff and things like that. And that's why I wanted to talk about it mainly because this Armbuckle thing, and they're still doing the India thing. I remember reading about that. That was like a couple weeks ago. They were saying how the they were going to do something in India, but it got canceled. And they're going to try and do something uh, in April. So honestly, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens in the near future with the company. And as always, I mean, you know, here's hoping that, you know, nothing falls through and everything that they are planning on doing actually ends up happening. Next, we're going to talk about AEW considering starting a streaming service like through Warner Brothers Discovery. An AEW streaming service could be in the works. An article in Bloomberg's release Thursday revealed that the company is considering starting a streaming service and knows a potential deal could involve broadcast partner Warner Brothers Discovery. The adult reads, AEW is also considering starting a streaming service, likely through a deal with its broadcast partner, Warner Brothers Discovery Incorporated, according to a person familiar with management's thinking, who acts not to be named. 
AEW president Tony Khan previously discussed the idea of an AEW streaming service during an interview with Barstool Sports in October 2021. He noted that there had been discussions with Warner Media regarding it and that he was in the process of building the company's library. At the time, Khan sounded confident a deal would be announced shortly. So this is very interesting mainly because, oh uh, man, there's like a bunch of streaming services, especially for wrestling. You've got Honor Club, you've got Fight TV. Uh, I know that, well, who else does that? No, MLW just got the TV deal. Who else has a streaming service? Does Evolve have one? I don't actually know, you know. Does Progress have a streaming service? I don't know. Anyway, um, AEW, they have a streaming, well, they're going to get a streaming service, and it sounds like more than likely it's going to happen. I, so, you can obviously tell that AEW and Warner Brothers are, like, really good friends. You can tell that Warner Brothers is is very happy with, uh, you know, how AEW is conducting itself and, you know, the numbers that AEW is bringing in. And you can tell that one of them goes to the other person and goes, what if I did this? And one of them is go, great, that's me. I, I don't even see why you wouldn't do that, you know? We're going to have to keep an eye out for that streaming service. We're also going to have to keep an eye out for that documentary. If you remember, AEW said they were going to be doing something with that with uh, Warner Brothers. So we got two, uh, two AEW-related guys floating in the air, so we're just going to have to wait and see when they end up landing. Finally, Eric Bischoff believes that Tony Khan wants to be in a particular conversation. In order to be in the conversation with WWE's Vince McMahon and WCW's Eric Bischoff in terms of high-level success in the wrestling business as a promoter, AEW's Tony Khan would have to do things differently according to Eazy-E. During the latest 83 weeks, Bischoff detailed why he believes entering that conversation is one of Khan's main goals, and in having that goal, he's done so, quote, at the expense of what it takes to get you to that level of success. Bischoff believes Khan is affecting his booking by following this mentality, and also thinks part of that has to do with the lack of respect Bischoff has shown Khan's way when discussing AEW. I think Tony reacts more out of emotion, Bischoff said. I think part of Tony's reactions is more emotional reactions based on the fact that he's not getting the kind of respect from me. I know this is a fact. We have a mutual friend who got a text that basically said so, and I've heard it from more than one person. My criticisms are not meant to be towards Tony the person. I have some admiration for Tony the person, particularly as of late. I think Tony the person is a really good person. I think I disagree with his approach to the business. When describing the key reason why he disagrees with Khan's approach to wrestling, Bischoff pinpointed Khan striving to win, quote, dirt sheet booker of the year and developing a creative strategy based on reactions from the internet as things he wishes he'd stop doing. You're not driven by the internet, you're driven by the television audience, Bischoff said. The success or failure of your company, Tony, is not how well the Dirt Sheet universe and the internet wrestling community react to you. It's how well the general audience, who may not even participate in that stuff, react to you. I think, okay, there was a video that I saw recently of Tony Khan, and it's just a compilation of him being a massive dweeb. Just an absolute pencil-pushing dork. And I love that. I love it. Every second. It's, okay, I don't know if you've seen this. I don't know if you've seen this. It's just a compilation of Tony just being an absolute dork he's just being a doofus like all he needs to do is go clicking and that's it and he's perfect like bruh he was he was getting he's like the way he hugs people he's very affectionate he's very 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 affectionate you can tell that tony khan he's right eric is perfect is, is right if you watch that video tony khan gets very like emotional he gets very like invested in what he's talking about there's a promo that tony i don't remember the full promo man but it's the funniest thing it's a picture that i put on my video sometimes and every time i see it it is the funniest picture in the world it's the picture you'll probably know what it is it's the picture, I'm probably gonna put it up, I'm probably gonna put it up, it's the picture of Tony Khan, he's got his eyes closed and he's pointing, and it was like, it was a promo that he was, so, it was like a match, I forget who was in it, man, I forget, but it, I think it was on, it was like, oh, this was a while ago, this was a while ago, and he comes out and he's like, nine days, you've got nine days until the pay-per-view, you've gotta get ready, both of you have nine days, I'll give you nine days, like, he came out, just, just, I mean, just on fire man it was absolutely incredible and that is really a testament to just how tony khan feels about this whole promotion about wrestling you know what i mean like you gotta have a guy like that that's why i understand where eric bischoff is coming from he's obviously not saying this in like a what's the word uh, uh a thing like he's not saying it in like a like a like a like a way of malice he's just like hey this would be better if you did that and i think tony khan understands that and that's why i say that i don't think tony khan is really doing anything like detrimental to his company i think everything's totally fine because tony khan is an exceptional booker and i mean honestly man he's gonna make mistakes and there's like literally nothing wrong with that what are we talking about Q4 financial investor call, boring, boring numbers, blah, blah, who cares? The main thing is that I feel like Vince is going to try and he's going to try, he's going to try and stay in WWE. I don't necessarily know if he's going to do that, but based on what I've been hearing, right, based on if, if it'll be good 
for the shareholder value. That just tells me everything that I need to know. Uh, NBC Universal. So pretty much everybody's fine with everybody. You got AEW, Warner Brothers. I mean, just, just, you know, hot dog and grandstanding. You got WWE, Fox, and NBC Universal. They're absolutely hunky-dory. You know what I'm saying? Skipping through the meadow, holding hands. Everything's fine. You got a streaming service starting up with AEW. I mean, they've got absolutely nothing wrong with them. You know what I'm saying? So AEW is getting a streaming service. I assume it's going to be like WWE Network. is just a hub for like everything AEW. And I assume, see, now that would be a good idea to put BTE on there. That way nobody has to worry about anything and you get more eyes on the product. Again, I don't know if they're going to do Sammy Guevara's vlog. That depends if Sammy wants that to happen. And Eric Bischoff was like, hey, man, if you could just, you know, not be emotional, that'd be awesome. And Tony Khan was like, well, uh, tough, you know. So... Uh, but yeah, I, again, I understand where Tony Khan is. I understand where Eric is coming from. He doesn't want Tony Khan to money up the whole company and just the whole, uh, you know, booking. Uh, I had the word. The booking progress. I don't know. I don't even think that was the word. Folks, that's going to do it for this episode. Hopefully everybody has a wonderful tonight and a wonderful tomorrow. And as always, big hugs. Big hugs all around.